Hey Bombers and Bombshells, it's your girl Claire and today we have another exciting episode of Fashion Bomb TV. Today we're talking to hip-hop legend and fashion entrepreneur Carl Kanai. We're going to learn how he got his start and his keys to success. You're going to love this one. Let's check it out. We need to just start from the beginning. How did, how did it start? How did the brand begin? Well, you know, the essence of Carl Kanai started in the streets of Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. um, my family was from Costa Rica and Panama. Mm -hmm. We migrated to the U.S. probably like in the early 70s. Mm -hmm. My dad used to get his clothes made by a tailor in Flatbush, Brooklyn. The first time to meet all the kids in the projects. And when I came out, they were like, yo, shorty, where'd you get your sneakers from? I'm like, yo, these are like specs. They was like, man, those just came from the uh, grocery store. Mm -hmm. I went home crying to my mom. I was like, Mom, these kids is out here like saying my clothes is whack. I need some money to buy some clothing. She was like, well, you better go out there and find yourself a job. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, from the islands, they're not playing that. Yeah. So what I did, I went out and got me a newspaper route so I could start making some money to buy clothing. Mm -hmm. And one thing kind of led to another. I thought about my dad's tailor, and I wanted to outdress all these guys, so I started making my own clothing. And mm -hmm. dudes from the project started giving me money to make them clothing, and I started making them clothes. What was, like your first big break, like the first hip hop star to Moment. I would say like when Dr. Dre and Ed Lover on your MTV raps mm -hmm. started wearing my clothing. Because okay. you gotta understand something, you're taking a kid from the streets of Brooklyn, New York, just with an idea and a name. We had to convince millions of kids that you, there's alternatives to wear other than Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, Donna Karen. Let's talk about the name Carl Kanai. Is that your real name? It is now. <laughs> it is I, now. I changed it legally to Kanai when I passed my citizenship test in 1998. Okay. My family's last name was Williams. When I was trying to come up with the name of my clothing line, I was at home trying to say Carl Williams Jeans. It just didn't have that ring to it. It didn't sound like Donna Karen, Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger. It didn't have that ring to it. So mm -hmm. Kanai was a question I used to ask myself all the time. Can I be successful? Can I come from the inner city and develop a brand that's going to become internationally known? I have to answer that question every day. Yes, I can. So can I was a question of self-doubt, and every mm -hmm. day I have to answer that question. So I implemented that into part of my name, and now it's my name forever. Why did you come to LA? Yeah, good question. My, my childhood friend named AZ, who I grew up with, he was hustling on the streets. He skipped town and came to California to live with his brother in Orange County. So I told him to find us a spot. He finds us a store on Crenshaw and 43rd Street in the middle of the hood, South Central. Mm -hmm. We came out here, they wasn't buying it. We had zero sales, oh. um, made no money. Mm -hmm. We were starving. We couldn't even afford a McDonald's breakfast. As a matter of fact, some entrepreneurs came in the store on a Sunday and robbed us at gunpoint, took all our samples, took everything. We ended up moving to Hollywood. We met the owners of Cross Colors back in 1991. So I figured he's like trying to steal my brand, steal my designs, I didn't know. And within the first two weeks, we got a $2 million order from Eric around and DJs and wow. that's what kind of really was our set off right there. What are some iconic moments in hip hop and Carl Kanai history? I couldn't be as much um, grateful for the opportunities I have and work with some of the top artists in the industry from Aaliyah to Biggie to Jay-Z to Puff. Now, this one I'm about to show you right here is really means a lot to me. This campaign with Snoop, this means everything. This is when me and Snoop first connected on a deeper level and was able to share a lot of um, thoughts and ideas of inner cities and things like that. And I said, Snoop, will you be willing to blow your Afro out and do this whole 70s vibe? He's like, whatever you want. And this is like classic, iconic moments in hip hop. Can we talk about Tupac? You know, Tupac used to wear my clothes a lot, a lot, a lot before I met him. I go to Tupac's room and he knock on the door, he says, come in. He tells us to come in, he never looked up and looked at me. But he's having a very intelligent conversation with us as he's focused on his laptop. So I was like, yo, Pop, so like, how much would you charge me to do an ad? It felt like he was quiet for like five, 10 minutes. And I thought to myself, man, I messed up. I shouldn't have asked him that. Mm -hmm. Then he turns around and says, yo, man, you black. I don't charge my people for nothing. Wow. And, and he's a man of his word. Like, he could have came to me and said, yo, I want 200,000, 300,000, whatever. He's like, no, I'm doing this for, I'm doing this because you're a black man. I want to see you be successful. Uh, Ariana Grande wore that jacket in her video, Every Day with Future. And that's what really set it off. Wow. Her stylist came to me and said, Ariana wants to wear streetwear. 
and they picked this code out and she worked for the whole video. Wow. And that's what really set us off in terms of internationally. Her fans are love her to death and she mm -hmm. wore this jacket and it really just helped put us on the map. Tell me about this jacket. This jacket is one of a racing themed jacket that we did back mm -hmm. in 1996. Timeless quality is mm -hmm. where we're at. And you see the colors are still relevant, the red, black, and white, which you have on right now, so it's all legit. Mm -hmm. So when you do this timeless stuff, it never goes out of style. You see these colors, what's happening here? <laughs> these jackets are from the 90s. Carl Knight like jeans on sewn now with uh, puffed out stars with foam behind it. Let me explain to you what you get when you get one of these Carl Knight bubble jackets. Not only is the jacket reversible, right? See that? Okay. Well, going back. See that? Mm -hmm. Who else could do that? See, Ralph can't do that. Tommy can't do that. Mm -hmm. Only Carl Knight could do that. Mm -hmm. It looks great with this one. Part of our new stripe collection we have coming out. Vintage stripe shirts. We're, we're in over 100 Urban Outfitters and they're carrying this full collection. They understand the culture, understand the 90s, so it's really cool. Tips for, for fashion designers. I was always focused, 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 focused. I was so focused. <laughs> I used to watch the, NB, uh, the, the Today Show mm -hmm. with Matt Lara and Al Croker. He used to be the, the news guy. Mm -hmm. And I used to watch him and he used to go outside and talk to the people in the crowd. And as he's outside every day, millions of people used to watch NBC. People used to out there with signs up. Hi, Mama from Colorado. He's going to interview people. I was trying to figure out a way to get my brand name out there. I thought about NBC News, and I thought about that crowd. And I had this guy named Q from the Bronx who really wanted a job with me really bad. Get Q a big car can I sign, go up to NBC every morning, and hang a car can I sign up. You be the one in the crowd. Instead of saying, <laughs> hi, mama from Colorado, hang up a car can I sign. Every day, millions of people started seeing Carl Kanai's name on TV for free. Brilliant. You, know what I mean? you can't be everything to everybody. Like, you try mm. to say, I'm gonna take care of this guy, I'm gonna make sure this person likes my stuff, this person, you're not being yourself anymore. You gotta stay true to yourself and design clothing that you like and just be dope about it, feel confident about it, and people will gravitate to your look and to your vibe. Urban streetwear has never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just so much in the forefront right now right. because the feeling and the vibe of the 90s has always been replicated by so many other designers, but we never really got the props for it, from where it came from. Right. They take from our culture, but never mm -hmm. give back the props to it. Right. I think through the power of hip hop, it's coming back to the streets. Mm -hmm. And it's coming back to true designers that represent the culture. I don't know if you saw the, um, the Grammys where Cardi B was performing. She had a cross color hat on. Yeah. And I believe that was a Mark Jacobs outfit she had on with it. It was um, Moschino. Moschino. Yeah. How ironic is that? That looks just like a cross color outfit they had Yeah. On. And you know what? Initially we reported it was just Moschino, but I was like, cross colors is no, right here. Exactly. So they just really emulated right. cross colors, their whole vibe. That was our culture. We created that. Me and cross color, we were partners together. That was our look. Right. We created that. And if the story's not told properly, if I don't survive, cross colors don't survive, this whole urban streetwear thing could be just be like, it never happened. Like, it was their culture. They presented this look. Mm -hmm. So we have to stand strong. And the only way we can stand strong is through the power of hip-hop. Because hip-hop artists still dictate what's hot. They Bottom do. line. Right. If hip-hop is not messaging with clothing, it's very difficult to be hot, hot on streetwear. Mm -hmm. That's why I respect the Migos. That's why I respect Diddy. That's why I respect all these artists who came back to show Carl Can I Love as we were trying to come back to our thing. Diddy was rocking it. Diddy had his son rocking it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what it's all about. Black mm -hmm. excellence. And for Diddy to like post things about Carl Can I like that, like, that's just real. Okay. Do you feel like you get the respect you deserve? Somewhat. <laughs> no, I feel like this. I feel like, you know, those that know, no. they know. Right. Those that don't know, they just don't know, but they will know. 